Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have kind of a follow up to a previous video I made on you know data modeling and also data engineering interview questions where I want to go through some of the most common data modeling questions you might run into in an interview and give you the answers to them. Um, so, you know, not only is this good for interviews, but just good for general, you know, knowledge of what data modeling is as a concept and as a whole uh, for conversation or, you know, for the work life. Although, yeah, I hope you're not discussing data modeling in your personal life that much. Uh, but that's what we're going to do today. Um, you know, I'll get right into it. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, join my Patreon. It helps me out a lot. Uh, but let's get into it. And the first question I got here is a question uh, that's probably one of the most common that you'll see, um, which is explain the difference between a conceptual, logical, and physical data model. And here, the, the high level kind of what you want to answer here is an understanding that says, hey, conceptual model is a high level view that shows entities and relationships without technical details. It's just business requirements and scope. Then that moves to a logical model, which is a more detailed structure that has attributes, data types, constraints um, written on it, but is platform independent. You know, it's not actually an implementation of that model. Uh, and then a physical model is actually putting a logical model into practice and including all the implementation specific details like indexes, partitions, storage considerations. Um, and so a good answer for this would be something like the conceptual model answers what the business needs, identifying key entities like customer, order, product, and relationships. The logical model answers the how by defining specific attributes, primary keys, foreign keys, and business rules. And then the physical model answers where and how efficiently um, by specifying database specific implementations like table spaces, indexes, and partitioning strategies. Now, the next question you're likely to get is something like, what are the key principles of good data modeling? And here, the key points that you want to cover are accuracy, that a model reflects real-world business processes, completeness, that all necessary data elements are included, consistency, meaning you have uniform naming conventions and standards, flexibility, meaning you know, planned accommodation for future changes, simplicity, easy to understand and maintain, and performance. You want to be optimized for expected usage patterns. Now, another common question you might be asked is, how do you identify entities and attributes in a business scenario? And here, it's not about just like, what is an entity and attribute, but also like, how are they used in a business setting? So you can I, you know, showcase, hey, I not only know how to do data modeling, I know how to do effective mod data modeling for a business use case. Um, and here, you know, the kind of first thing is, hey, lo listen for nouns versus, you know, adjectives and properties. You know, things that are typically adjectives or properties are going to be attributes. Nouns are typical potential and are typically entities. Um, and then from there, you want to look for relationships between entities, validate that those entities are actually, you know, core uh, business objectives that you want to track. Um, and then also, you know, consider the data lifecycle and business processes to identify, hey, these is, this is what should be an entity, this is what should be an attribute. Really looking for, you know, understanding of how does data modeling fit into the actual business world. Now, another very common topic in, in interviews for data modeling is something around data normalization. Um, you know, what is normalization and when would you denormalize? Um, and on the topic of normalization, it's just good to know, hey, what are the things you need to do to achieve each state of NF, right? So first for one NF, you know, eliminate repeating groups. Two NF, remove partial dependencies. Three NF, remove transitive dependencies. And BCNF is every determinant is also a candidate key. Um, and then when you would denormalize, the common situations you would want to denormalize in would be something like for read heavy workloads, data warehousing. Um, if you had performance requirements that outweighed the storage costs. Um, and also, reporting and analytics scenarios where you want, might want to have that raw data available uh, or just when joins become too ex expensive. You know, so a mix of both practical and best practices types of answers there to understand, hey, you know, not only is this, you know, they studied up in the theory of it, but also the logic that comes into play in the real world. Now, the next topic that's likely to come up in any data model in interview is around choosing appropriate data models. Um, and here, you know, obviously, if you get a specific type of data, you know, just choose the data type for that, and that's you know, going to be difficult to do. But 
you know, for example, if I you have a customer ID, I'd choose integer if we expect millions of customers, but big end for enterprise scale, giving options. Um, for names, Varkar 100 allows flexibility while preventing excessive storage. Um, and really the guidelines you want to have here is you always want to use the smallest data type that will accommodate all possible values. Um, while also considering future growth, but don't over-engineer to an extreme degree. You know, you probably don't need to have integer for, or a big int for customer ID for, you know, a small town bake shop, right? Um, also knowing the difference between, you know, when you would use var car versus car based on data variabil variability, um, the different numeric types based on precision requirements, you know, if you need to go to decimal place, things like that. Um, and then also any kind of temporal data, you're going to want to use date time and time types for, because those will contain all the actual logic around, you know, the date time rather than just storing it as a raw number. Now, another common topic is going to be some kind of question around indexing strategies. So something like, hey, you know, explain index strategies and when to use different types. Um, and the most common types of indexes that you'll want to discuss are, you know, clustered indexes where the physical order matches the index order, you know, one per table. Um, there's also non-clustered where you have logical pointers to data rows. Composite, where you have multiple columns for complex queries, so multiple different ID columns. Uniqueness, or unique IDs, where every column or every row needs to have a unique ID, which enforces uniqueness constraints really well. And then partial, where you have filtered indexes for specific conditions. Um, and some, some overall guidance you might want to illuminate on in an interview is something like, you know, you want to index frequently queried columns, consider composite indexes for multi-column where clauses, um, and you're always going to want to balance query performance versus the insert and update overhead. Um, and, you know, obviously throughout all of this, monitor index usage and remove any unused indexes as they become unused. Now, another very common and very important topic is partitioning. Um, and here, you know, you're likely going to be asked, hey, how do you approach partitioning decisions? What kind of partitioning decisions would you use for a particular use case? Um, and here, just make sure you know at least the three main partitioning types. So horizontal, where you split rows based on criteria like date ranges or geography, or vertical, where you split columns based on access patterns. And that's actually what you see here as an example of vertical partitioning. Well, there's another option, which is functional, where you separate by business function. Um, and here, the decision factors, you should say, you know, would guide your decision for partitioning is data volume and growth patterns, uh, query patterns and performance requirements, maintenance windows and backup strategies, and things like parallel processing capabilities as well, if you need to use those things. Now, the next question that you'll likely get, and this is, you know, one of the classic ones is, when you would use a snowflake schema versus a star schema. Um, and the really simple answer here is, you know, a star schema is better for simple queries and, you know, faster performance for those simpler queries. And it's e typically easier for business users to understand, but comes with data, some data redundancy in dimensions. Whereas a snowflake schema will have normalized dimensions that reduce storage um, and enable more complex queries with additional joins, um, where you have you know, many smaller tables working together as needed, and is a better choice for managing dimensional hierarchies um, with more complex data types. Um, and really just highlighting those two differences and you know, the different use cases they support should be sufficient to answer those questions typically. Now, another very common type of question in these interviews is going to be around, hey, how would you design a data model for something like a social media platform? Now, since that's very often a platform with a lot of data needs. Um, and here, you know, I have an example, but things you want to think about for these types of questions is like, hey, what are the key entities a business like that would want to track? So for a social media platform, that's likely things like users, uh, you know, posts, the relationship between users, you know, friendships, comments, likes, where users should have, you know, things like profile information, privacy settings attached to them. Posts will have both content, you know, links to content, um, but also timestamps and certain visibility, you know, based on who it's being served to. Um, you have those relationships between users, you have likes, so, you know, hey, uh, user that is liking another user's object, right? Um, and you want to think about, hey, you know, how do you design a data model that can handle billions of these posts and relationships and support real-time feeds and also 
comply with any privacy and security requirements and geographic distribution. So while on the surface it might seem simple, there's really a lot of complexity that goes into designing these types of systems for you know the type of scale that something like Facebook would use, right? Um, and those are also companies where you might be interviewing for. So now finally, just want to talk about you know other ty another type of question you'll get, which is you know how do you identify and resolve performance issues in data models? Um, and this is really testing, hey, like, what is your troubleshooting capability? How are you going to optimize our models when you come in? Um, and here, you're going to want to talk about things like query execution plans um, for identification, database performance monitoring, you know, looking for spikes in certain uh, monitoring metrics, Indig use index usage statistics, which indexes are being most commonly used. Is there a bottleneck? Um, wait time analysis, is there, you know, are queries being sent to wait super regularly? Um, and then some common resolution strategies you can talk about are things like, hey, add appropriate indexes, um, optimize query structure and change how people are doing their queries. Um, consider things like partitioning or restructuring the data to align with those common query patterns. Um, review normalization levels. Does data need to be more or less normalized? Um, and then finally, you know, update statistics, right? Like how often is data getting updated to get a sense of, you know, how is this data being used? Um, and those are really, you know, kind of the top questions that represent really the biggest areas you're going to get asked these, uh, in data modeling interviews. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for anyone out there uh, interviewing for a position that requires data modeling. Hope you get the job and hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.